Labrador, wild, majestic, breathtaking. Labrador is truly one of the last wild frontiers on this planet. This rugged landscape, dotted with thousands of rivers and lakes, is a fly fisher's nirvana. For me, one river in particular has been the focus of much dreaming and fantasy. A river that has one of the best runs of Atlantic salmon in the world. A place where huge salmon will eagerly come to a dry fly. That dream location, the Lewis River. The salmon here are curious. Territorial. And very, very aggressive. For those that love the visual ecstasy of seeing a salmon taking down a dry fly, this is it, the best of the best. Lewis River Lodge is also the ultimate experience, an experience beyond compare. For anglers with a bucket list, Lewis River is one place you must go before you die. This is the ultimate in Atlantic salmon fishing, truly the best of Labrador. This is the ultimate in Atlantic salmon fishing and truly some of the best of Labrador. Come join me on my dry fly fantasy trip to the legendary Lewis River. Stop, wiggle, all the way down. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Islander Precision Reels, Rail Riders Outdoor Clothing, the toughest clothes on the planet, Net Staff, the world's first waiting staff and net. Scientific Anglers. Atlantic Salmon, this is my addiction. And to catch them on dry flies, it doesn't get any better. With that in mind, I'm heading to Labrador to visit the St. Louis River Lodge as a guest of Chris Verbisky, owner of Atlantic River Outfitters Company. For years, I've heard about the legendary runs of Atlantic salmon this river receives. To say I was excited Go. would be a vast understatement. All right, that was fantastic. I was about to live a dream. I had to pitch to him quite a few times to get him come up. Oh, this is good fish too. <laughs> How fantastic is this? The St. Louis River Lodge is located in southeastern Labrador, approximately 290 kilometers or 180 miles 
southeast of Goose Bay. Access to the lodge is via a one and a half hour helicopter flight. This flight alone is very special. A breathtaking aerial trip of the wilderness of Southern Labrador. Chris spoke to me about dry flying techniques that work on the Lewis River. So Chris, one of the things I think a lot of people find fascinating, especially from a dry fly perspective, is that usually everybody's thinking in terms of presentation, a dead drift technique, but you're being really active with your fly, uh, trying to agitate the salmon to come up and at least look at your fly or show themselves. Can you explain what you're doing and how you're doing it? So what we had a few days back, we had some uh, big storms come through and it popped the river. Um, and we, we can see all this foam on the water. So I'm shooting for the, uh, shooting for the windows, the clear windows, and just giving it a little bit of action to drag it through the foam lines. And typically the salmon, when, it, when, the, uh, when the fly comes into those uh, clear windows, the salmon has an equal opportunity to be able to take the fly. And I find giving it that little bit of extra action uh, induces the salmon up to it. Now, do you think it, when it's skating on the top like that, is that mimicking a caddis and they trigger something from their uh, memory of when they were young? I think it's a valid point. I think what, uh, what's happening here, it looks like, a, it looks like a, uh, a bug trying to swim ashore, swim out of the tide. And I think that, you know, I, I've seen it happen so often with these salmon where uh, you put a little bit of action on and uh, compared to a dead drift in certain, certain circumstances and uh, the salmon will just ignite on it. Now, are there times that you want to use a dead drift presentation and not put this type of action on it? This water will be in prime condition by tomorrow. It'll be another 24 hours for it to, to drop into a reasonable level. That's when we'll start doing a lot of more dead drifting than, than twitching. Good job. Finally got him come up. Oh, it's a nice one. Nasty. Yeah, just that perfect window came through. I've got one down here. There's two or three, and they keep jumping, but they can't see my fly. Oh, Jesus. that's nice. Are you using 10 pound test? Oh. Popped out. Yeah. But you're using 10 pound test, is ten, that right? 10 pound, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's, the water's a little stiff to be using eight. Typically, we use eight pound. Okay. And that just pops out. Now, are you using barbless or barb? Uh, Typically bar barbless? Barbless. So yeah. they're, they're barbed hook, but you squat the barb. Okay, great. Yeah. And then when you have something like that, you're going to lose a few fish. But of that's a, that's part of it, though, and we don't do damage to the no, fish, right? No. You know, the dry fly fishing is. is uh, it's absolutely fantastic here. Um, it's, it's a rough day when we put on wet flies, uh, which is virtually never. Um, you know, you skate these flies, dead drift them down through the pool, and it's also visual. The salmon is always coming to the, to the surface for the fly, and uh, that's why we market ourselves as a dry fly destination. Um, you'll have a tough time getting a guide to put on a wet fly for you here. He showed himself to me about three casts before. I saw the tail come up. He came out and looked at it. Oh. OK, you hold on to my shoulder. OK. Ready? Yep. I think he's almost ready. No, I think he's ready for one more jump. Let's see. Whoa. There we go. OK. I won't. Okay, better real quick. There you Good. Go. Nice. There she goes. All right. Gliding off. Slimy hand. No. Okay. Job call. Okay. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> It is. It's very special. It's, uh, it's in southern Labrador. Uh, we're adjacent to the Straits from a regional perspective, which has you know, hundreds of icebergs, hundreds of whales um, coming back into the, the, the fishing here. Um, the anglers have great experience here on the river. Um, as you indicated, we can hook 
fish before breakfast, go have a breakfast, come back down for another session. So it's, it's not long sessions, it can be as long as you want. Um, you can lounge around on the, on the patios, watch other anglers, um, and it's a pool that you don't need to be a great caster. Children can come here and cast 10 feet of line, 5 feet of line, and hook fish right on the shoreline here. This is an incredible pool. Incredible fish. Let's see if I can tail this. You know something? I didn't let you tail it. Because I can't get it in close enough with this current. Get the, I'll get the head up. There you go. Got it? All right. It was Chris Verbisky's dream to build a luxury lodge in the wilds of Labrador on the edge of a world-class Atlantic Salmon River. A lodge unlike any other in Eastern Canada. Chris has achieved this goal but it was not fast, nor was it cheap. It took years to build this facility in this location. There are no nearby roads here. The net result? A quality lodge that is absolutely spectacular. Yes, it's expensive, but for those who want the very best, this is it. The St. Louis River Lodge has six private suites each with large en-suites and propane fireplaces. The main lodge has a large gathering area, punctuated by a stunning wood-burning fireplace. The dining area has an outstanding view overlooking this river. The meals are superlative and of the highest quality served by the lodge chef. Each evening meal is an event and something quite special. Other amenities include a walk-in bar area, a wine cellar, plus an adjoining business office. The lodge also includes a dry sauna with both indoor and outdoor showers and has a large covered deck, which is a perfectly positioned lounging observatory of the falls pool below. This is my fourth, yeah. yeah. They're all big fish. They are. I got them. You got them? Okay, let's get his head up. Oh, I think that's our first grills, is it? It is, too. A little bigger than the grills, is it? Uh, it's, a, it's a healthy grills. Yeah. Gotta go. Coming back towards me. That was an incredible take. And you know, the amazing part is like a foot away from the shoreline. And I kid you not, the salmon was probably no more than two feet of water. And I skated it past the rock edge just, it's just before dark. We're getting ready. Oh, look at that. We're getting ready to have a some marshmallows by the fire. And this is how I'm going to end my day. Oh, no. Oh, it's coming right at me. Looks to be about an eight pound salmon. He's jumped about four or five times now. I'm using 10 pound tippet. So I can get over here. There's a nice little beach over here, and I'm going to land him. Unfortunately, they had a net. Guess we fell into this pool. We don't have a net anymore. I mean, how much fun is this? How much fun is this? Catch salmon on a dry fly, beautiful river. And the amazing part of the Labrador, no bugs. Look at this fish. How's that for a nice salmon? You see, I got the leader wrapped around him. Not too bad. You get the fly out and get them back in the water, and that water is cold. Whoa. Leader off them, put them in. Won't take long to revive in this cold water. And there he goes.
you always think that you know the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence, and uh, you know I've spent over the last well almost 25 years in Labrador um, exploring, and of course we've had great fishing here uh, during that time. But you always read books, or I've always read books, and, and you think that okay we got to get we got to do Norway, we got to do Scotland, we got to do Russia, we got to do Patagonia. And you start fishing around the world, and you realize what Labrador has to offer. It's a very special, unique place. It was the most subtle of takes. Oh, it's not a bad fish. It's not huge, but it's a nice fish. Probably about eight pounds. How sweet is that? The incredible thing is I've hooked this fish right at the base of where the lodge is. I literally had a cup of coffee, walked down here, grabbed my fly rod, and Chris and I came down here, started fishing. Five casts, six casts, I'm into a fish already. Look at that. Oh. How oh, wonderful. Oh, beautiful. Chris, could I ask a favor? Would you mind tailing this fish for me? Absolutely. I think I'll put the glove right there. He's going for a little run here. Got it? Yep. Back off on the line a bit in case there's a run. Chris got a lot of experience handling the fish. All right. <laughs> How fantastic is that? There we go. Okay. Got it? Yep. Nice. Nice oh. female. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> Powerful release. Hey, good job. Slimy uh, yeah. handshake. <laughs> the St. Louis River is mainly a dry fly river with very aggressive salmon, so the choice of flies is relatively simple. Bombers in a range of colors with orange and brown being the favorites. Came for the fly probably about six times. And just oh, that's a nice sized fish. Having to wait for the, the windows to come through to get the fly back to her in a sensible fashion. I'm wanting to keep my rod tip to the right here to keep it away from the rapids and to land her in this soft water because uh, if it goes down through the rapids, it's uh, they're done or, or I'm done. Now we were talking last night at dinner about the uh, famous uh, one minute per pound rule and how that's not really applicable. We want to get these fish in as quickly as possible and have them expend a minimal amount of energy. Um, how do you do that? What are some of the things you do? You know, and I think just play, play them hard. And uh, it's not like it's the last fish in the river. Um, play them hard, get them in, and go again. Yeah. Uh, this is probably a 10-pound fish, and you can't be more than three minutes here now. Okay. If she's more than 10, I'd say that's a 12, 12, 13-pound fish. Wow. Beautiful. Here we go. It'll take long to revive this fish. Plenty of gas. <laughs> nice release. Good Thanks. job. Oh, oh Carlo's got a dog on. Oh, real? <laughs> oh, freight training, freight training, freight training. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't think, Colin. My God, he's going to give it a try. Yeah. Be careful. You don't want to fall. Fall on those rocks. If he can get him down to that lower pool, he might save. Yeah. Him. Yeah. That's a nice fish. It is a nice fish. Like I say, they're all big fish here right now. It is. I was telling you that they oh. lost them. Oh, that's a heartbreaker after working like that.
nice fish, Terry. It's a nice fish. Here we go. Nice fish. Took him right in the edge here. Oh, look at that jump. Oh, just a fresh fish. Another one. So we're into jump number seven or eight now. Trying to keep him away from the current. He gets out here in the current and gets down river. I'm going for a run. Oh. The agony of defeat. I've lost so many fish on this trip, but that's Atlantic salmon fishing. And that's one of the reasons why I love the challenge. We hope you enjoyed sharing my trip to a legendary lodge on a world-class river. Songwriter John Lane wrote and sang an ode to the Lewis. We shall end on his beautiful sounds and say farewell. The Lewis River flows to the valley below. From my window on her brow I can see the white waterfalls and the rushing wind falls through the tops and amidst all the trees. All the diamond and gold cannot buy it For it's worth more than money can share And my heaven is here On the Lewis River In the heart of the great Labrador By her sides, like a robe fit for a king. Her streamline with color that sparkle with. Be sure to subscribe. Every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we're putting out new videos just for you.